2025 will not be a normal year for sim racing. We have several games coming into the scene, some games perhaps leaving the scene, and eventually this will mean that several, or not just several, a lot of sim racing players will face difficult choices they have to make going forward. In this video we'll try to decipher this a bit, look into the details, and perhaps we'll manage to formulate an opinion, um, and then I'm very interested to hear yours in the comments. The big news of recent weeks probably was that Studio 397, the company behind R Factor 2 and Le Mans Ultimate, were forced to lay off a lot of staff because they desperately need to reduce their costs in order to, to stay afloat at all. Additionally, they put the company up for sale, which indicates they need major investment to keep things running at all. Which really is a shame and really bad news for the sim racing community because it is very tricky to turn such a situation around and apparently you will need to find someone who is ready to sink money into the company and really believes in it that they can make a turnaround and become profitable the issue is if you look at the product and if you look at the amount of players that it has we can only assume the actual sales they have but just looking who's online any any day basically you can see there's 500 to 800 players actually playing the game actively on a daily basis of course there's more players but you know that's the that's the daily piece in steam um it is an early access game which means it is not a full game so people or a lot of people will still stay away until it is fully finished which of course diminishes their potential customer base it's a shame really because the game I find has improved a lot since the beginning. Um, of course it wasn't enough for me personally to invest a lot of time in it, but of course it started looking graphically good, it started to have decent FPS, um, the multiplayer experience in general was functional, and they added more content both in terms of tracks and cars, and they already had the GT3 pack for this year on the horizon. Though now with them laying off quite a bit of staff, I personally am a bit unsure if they will manage to bring out that, I think, vital DLC because GT3s are still the number one class driven by the majority of sim races because sim races, um, a lot of them are just what real GT3 drivers are. They are kind of good, interested amateurs. GT3 cars are the cars that are helping you identify with brands if you have such an affiliation they assist you in the driving and you can feel and be reasonably fast in these cars that typically run the assists with abs and tc which is why gt3 is such an important class in sim racing as well and why it's so loved and hated in the community Though now it looks very dire, that situation, I'm not sure that DLC is ever going to come and if it comes, it might arrive a tiny bit too late to add to the bank accounts of Studio 397 at the end of the day. And also additionally, not just that it might come later now with less staff working on it, additionally people might just shy away from buying that dlc with the news of the company indicating that they're not in a healthy estate and maybe people don't want to sink money in something that perhaps they won't play for long which in the end for us for this video means Le Mans ultimate and africa 2 2 might actually kind of disappear from the sim racing scene maybe this year already maybe in 2025 maybe it lasts another year but it's certainly going to affect the sim racing community in 2025. We, I, I'm not sure how to carry over to the next topic, but they are intertwined. A lot of people that played ACC so far, and also with AC Evo on the horizon, and ACC not receiving much development or any at all, we don't really know, um, is that people were already eyeing different simulations that they were going to play from 2025 or a little later onwards when the game they were currently on which is ACC uh, is kind of not, not dying is the wrong word but phasing out and Le Mans Ultimate was one of these candidates and now with Le Mans Ultimate gone ACC players also face a difficult choice so let's get into that here I think we have to start a tiny bit with the uh, well history of acc and ac as well and that means looking back just before the COVID 19 pandemic hit the world 
ACC was averaging 1,000 players a day pretty much, end of 2019. And the old AC at that time had four to 5,000 daily players, where it was already kind of a dated game being five years old. But in 2022, these numbers have increased massively due to mainly due to the pandemic. This is where it all picked up massively. And you can see this on the Steam stats. ACC then went up to five, 6,000 daily average players. And the old AC even went up and until today to almost 20,000 players that are daily active on the game. So you can see there has been a massive increase of players that were playing products from Kunos. And in ACC terms, this kind of plateaued a little since 2022. You could see the kind of the peaks when the patches came, they keep kept increasing, but the kind of the average player base on a daily basis since 2022 didn't really grow much. So it seemed like players were leaving, players were coming, but in total, the numbers pretty much stayed the same, signaling that the growth of ACC has kind of already hit a ceiling there. And now we face that situation that we have Assetto Corsa Evo on the horizon and we had the trailer just last week where everybody kind of got a first glimpse of what the game might feature. Though it seems like it left more open questions than it really answered questions. It seems to have a bit of everything. There was some race cars shown, there were uh, rain was shown. Uh, there were road cars shown, apparently public roads were shown. So until now, people can't really make up their mind of what Assetto Corsa Evo might be. And nobody can yet kind of commit to deciding they will definitely play this game because they don't know if that what they were playing is going to be possible in this game, especially early on in the early access phase where Assetto Corsa Evo is going to launch it. We also have to make a bit of a separation between the Isetto Corsa people and the ACC people who I think in nature are very different in terms of what they're looking to play. Isetto Corsa are the crowd that kind of wants a cheap game, probably not has the most expensive hardware, and they are more into, well, screwing about than actually racing. They're probably more on traffic servers. They are going to be more on public roads. They like the modding. They want to drive every other car that you can imagine and do drifting or whatever, right? We we know. In ACC though, the mostly active players or at least what appears to me the active user base is in that game with a competitive mindset and with multiplayer in mind. So they are mainly driving this online and they are investing a lot of time into it. They are competitive. They are trying to become better, which also kind of shaped the entire ecosystem around ACC, which has several offerings of coachings, has offerings of setups, has offerings of data where I also play a role. And all this kind of shaped around that game, uh, staying there, getting improvements, being played by a reasonable amount of players. and. Now with Assetto Corsa Evo, I think the ACC base faces a bit of a challenge as everybody kind of expect that ACC is not going to receive a lot of attention from Kunos simply because they are focusing on getting AC Evo out there, going through the early access phase and eventually delivering a, a polished and complete product. So ACC is kind of left hanging in the state that it is and um, you can you can have different opinions about that of course generally it's a well-functioning game um, all the issues all the mechanics in the game they are kind of known and at the end of the day you can decide that whether or not this product as a whole is good for you is what you want to do or whether or not that product is not good enough for you and you are seeking something else. The other problem that ACC has is that over time now, pretty much everybody has driven every possible combination in that game because there are only so many GT3 cars, there are only so many tracks in the game. Yes, there are GT2s and GT4s, but we know how it is with them. They aren't really played. So it is overall very tricky to keep having new engaging experiences in ACC and things are starting to kind of wear off, get stale, get a bit boring. You are not 
inspired by the game anymore. It doesn't challenge you anymore. It kind of doesn't force your brain to adapt to something new. And that in the end is the thrill of everything. So yeah, with kind of the updates stopping perhaps and the game being or staying in the state that it is, I totally agree with some of the people who have decided already, like Mavix, for example, to slowly step away from ACC and focus on something else. The problem is, what is that something else? And I think now you're starting to see the problem if you haven't already. ACC might be in a state where players are getting slightly bored and are starting to look for something else. As said to Corsa Evo does not look to be ready, at least in the in the early stages, to replace ACC. So if you were a competitive GT3 driver and you want to just do that with better physics and better graphics, then yes, AC Evo is a candidate in the future probably. But in the beginning, at least with what was shown in the trailer, there is no indication that you could just seamlessly carry over to AC Evo and keep doing what you did, which creates a bit of a dead time frame until AC Evo is kind of the finished game that people need to continue what they did on ACC, which made people look out for other games. And one of the natural candidates in that was LMU. Though at the start of the video, I explained to you while LMU might not be on the cards at all, because that game might simply disappear and everything is a bit in jeopardy with that. And uh, I fear more than just um, the issues they face on, on the balance sheet, the issue they are going to face now is trust with the user base. So it will be ever more difficult for them to make sales. So again, LMU probably not an actual long-term option for anybody trying to switch from ACC, which leaves only two more candidates, if you ask me. And I'm not going to even talk about Race Room because for me, Race Room is already outdated since several years and yes it received a graphics patch but it's just highly unlikely that a game that has been there for such a long time and didn't manage to attract players suddenly does so because nothing fundamentally in the game has changed i doubt it was the graphics that held people away from race room it must have been something else and whatever that something else is it's still there so also race room is not going to play that role auto mobilista 2 i already know um, I get the chance to drive their um, development uh, versions and I can already tell you there's no secret about it. They've been working on the tire model again and again. They do this every patch, but I also feel the, the step they made this time is a little bigger and a bit a little more pronounced and it might give quite some people what it needed. But what Automobilist not or does not have is kind of this, this active scene that ACC really has around it, the sharing of the knowledge that is happening around ACC, the grinding that is happening in ACC, the setup development that is happening in ACC, the competitive scene that is there with uh, scheduled racing and uh, the options that ACC gives you with running multi-class grids with up to 100 cars, which is quite insane because not many games can do that, if any can do that at all. And this is, I think, where Automobilista is still coming short, even if they are going to do improvements in that area. The whole gameplay, the whole multiplayer in Automobilista 2 is simply not as developed, not as advanced, and will kind of, yeah, have a hard time just um, delivering the same experience that people had on ACC because everything around Automobilista 2 first has to develop, both in terms of what the community does with it, the knowledge everybody has to kind of pull out of that game and share with the community. So there is a, a joint scene that knows what they're doing in this game and you can actually go on a server and rightfully expect to have a close race with people in a similar skill group. Um, to, yeah, kind of to have a positive racing experience at the end of the day. So this is still up in the air if Automobilista can deliver this at all, even with the help of LFM, where there is a big community. But if the multiplayer itself, if the game itself is able to deliver the rich experience that ACC has been to users now for several years. Which kind of leaves one last candidate 
on the table, which of course is iRacing, the biggest sim racing there is on the market and the sim that probably has the biggest love-hate relationship with the audience. I recently also played it a bit again, just to get an idea how it has developed pretty much since the last time I actively played it really, which was in 2020. So four years on, I wanted to know, did some of the things that I always found annoying have actually changed? How ready is iRacing to pick up the pieces that potentially are going to be out there in the sim racing community in 2025 or six, who knows? And my personal opinion is that you can have a great racing experience on iRacing, meaning you have the multiplayer, you at any point of the day, you can probably just start it up, find the lobby with enough people to, to fill the grid, and you can always yeah, follow your passion, which is sim racing. The other big factor though in iRacing is, and always was, and for me it doesn't appear like that's going to change soon, is that the driving in that simulation is fundamentally different from all the other simulations. It is much less forgiving, it is much more sensitive, it is much more expensive, which I guess would be okay for the amount of time we really spend sim racing. So for me personally at least, um, the money is not the main factor, but the driving is. And yesterday I happened to drive the Porsche Cup and I just have to say it like it is. It was a horrible experience, full stop. The force feedback was bad. The behavior of the car was tricky to understand, at least. The load sensitivity of the tires is weird and the temperature sensitivity of the tires is even weirder. Um, and I'll not touch that car again until it receives a major update. The other thing is, I find the GT3 cars in iRacing, they have always occurred to me rather stale, very muted experiences, not a lot of depth in the cars, not too large differences between the cars when you drive them. So when we were speaking especially about the GT3 crowd that kind of exists predominantly around ACC, I am not sure if iRacing GT3 is actually able to deliver a similarly good experience that ACC has to offer still. And I'm just unsure how everything is going to unfold. If iRacing is ready to pick up the pieces of all the people that will be somewhat stranded out there in the next year, where we are not going to have LMU, where we will have an ACC in limbo, where we will have an AC Evil that is unfinished and where we will have an Automobilista which will offer a good driving experience but where I struggle to see how the multiplayer is going to develop and how it's going to kind of drag the people in and build that community that ACC has currently. So yeah, I can't really offer you a clear direction of how next years are going to look. All I can offer you is that you or encourage you to think about what you would like to see, what you'd like to do, what your personal thoughts are, especially when you're an ACC player. What are you going to do in the situation that is ahead of us? And I'm pretty certain that that situation is going to arrive sooner or later. Again, ACC will still be there, but we don't know how the community is going to handle the excitement of playing the new game EVO versus being stuck on old ACC with older physics, with some issues that couldn't ever be eradicated in ACC and players who want to move on, players who are ready to move on, but there's nothing out there that is ready to pick up these players. So I'm really curious, I'm really interested what your choice might be, what your thoughts are. You don't have to make the choice right now. You can still observe everything like I'm going to do. But I think this is something that we should talk about, which we're doing now. So I want to hear from you in the comments. Let's um, keep this discussion going. Maybe something will grow from it where we can formulate, even as a community, a demand towards the sim developers and say, hey guys, there's a void here. Can you fill it? This is what we need. 
Um, and with that, I'm going to leave you into the rest of the week. And again, let me know. Subscribe to the channel if you want to hear more. And then we'll see you in the next stream or video. Bye.